Hello viewers, Super GT here. Welcome back to some more Gran Turismo Sport, where I'm going to be doing a couple of races in the daily slash weekly races. I don't even know what we want to call them these days. I suppose they are weekly. So we're driving around Bathurst, which is actually how you pronounce the name of the track. Are you triggered, Australians? So starting here in six, which is also how you pronounce that word, and. Um, we have daily race C, so there's nine laps, and we're going to have to go for a pit stop in the middle, which is the norm for daily race C. So not an odd amount of laps, nine laps in total. So I suppose a potential for a split strategy. Some people might go in at the end of four for the undercut, and some at the end of five, or most at the end of five, I think. So there's also something else fairly interesting about this race. In the top six, three of us have got the Ford GT, three of us have gone for the Lexus. Now the Ford GT is the fastest single lap pace car. If you look at the top 10 uh, times around here, all of them are in the Ford GT. The problem with it though, is that it's absolutely sketchy as hell coming through this mountain section. So in terms of race pace, that might mean that other cars are slightly better. Um, ultimately, if you can drive the full GT to its ultimate pace, you probably will be the quickest person out there compared to someone else driving a different car to the ultimate pace. But it's very easy to make a mistake in this car, which in a race, obviously you don't want to be doing that. Sometimes it is easier to go for the better handling car, which doesn't have the ultimate pace, but you know, you're just going to make less mistakes. You see the guy in now fourth, started third, also in the full GT, making a mistake. So he's going to drop down a position. Guy in the lead also in the 4 GT, up against a Lexus. So it seems like a, a good battle here between the Lexus and the Ford. You can see how uh, well matched they are. So the Ford, really good top end. So it really does very well in the final sector and the first sector. Just through the middle sector, through the mountain where it struggles. Up the inside of Mr. Wi-Fi password. Got the job done. So he kind of uh, got hemmed in by the 4 GT had to break early to make sure we didn't go into the back of him and then the space opened up the inside so sending up the inside the, the full GT doesn't have the best brakes I'd say with the Lexus you can afford to brake a tiny bit later I'm just going to try to maximise the slipstream you see that just made contact with his rear end he actually put his, his lights on there to say thank you I think for kind of boosting him but I didn't actually mean to do that I was actually trying to go past him I just kind of misjudged it and again I suppose it's a mistake or it's a, it's a downside of the chase cam, you can't quite see the front of the car. Anyway, Deadly Monkey making a mistake through turn two and going into turn three just bails out. I wasn't sure if he was going to do that or not. I, I was maybe about 50% further ahead and uh, he just decided to, to back out, which I think was probably the sensible decision. I was, I was slightly further ahead going into the turn, so he lived to fight another day. And this is something we need to focus on here, really course try to make progress through the race try to overtake people but at the same time really just try to conserve ourselves and not really uh, make any accidents so drive within ourselves is our ethos and it's something that seems to have come up a lot on the channel recently uh, we mustn't push too much and we have done a little bit there you see they're coming down the dip the car really does go it goes heavy it goes light it does everything I don't even know what it's doing I'm just trying to control this wild out of control machine just about keep it under wraps onto the back straight so you see there he's about five times behind which is prime sucking zone when they're about that far behind they really do gain a lot of time so you can see they're half a second behind and immediately one tenth behind straight away I give him the inside for the kink but then I have the inside for the chase which I think was the right way to defend that so, I mean, I could have defended the right-hand side. And to be fair, both, if I had defended the left or the right, he had to go the long way round, or he would have had the outside. So I think both, on both occasions, I would have come out on top. So he wasn't quite close enough that time around. Going in a little bit deep, onto the run out towards the back straight. And this time, we're under attack from a Lexus. So the Lexus isn't as fast in a straight line, but he does have the advantage of the slipstream. You can see his nose just poking into the screen there. So he is he's quick, but he's kind of run out of steam. The slipstream has, uh, has run off, has run out, and uh, he's not going to be able to overtake me there. So doing it again, just enough 
to rebuff their attempts to overtake. You see third place has, has just driven off into the distance from all of this defending. To be fair, I'm quite happy with fourth. And again, he gets a better better run off the turn. The, uh, the Lexus a lot better on traction, just far easier to control that car compared to the Ford GT. And uh, crossing, uh, crossing the line in fourth place to begin lap four into turn one, just breaking pretty much on the 100 board down to second gear and then powering out onto an important straight here. Uh, the mountain straight going towards turn two. On the back straight though, a familiar story is developing here. You can see the theme. I'm on the back foot once again. So the Lexus, a different Lexus, actually no, it's the same Lexus. And is he gonna be able to go for the pass? No, I've blocked the right hand side. He's gonna have to go the long way around through the kink and then go for a, quite a big move into the hair, into, into the chicane. And unfortunately I've gone a little bit too deep on the brakes and that's let him in on the way out. So I think I defended well, apart from making that mistake, just braked a tiny bit too late, maybe 10 metres too late. You can see I just went a little bit too deep. And as a result, the Lexus getting the superior drive on the way out, up into fourth. I'm down to fifth on the fifth lap now. So people uh, will begin to go into the pit lane here. You see here, I'm in the prime sucking zone here. So you can see just how much of an advantage this car has. He's quite cleverly blocked the right-hand side, which is the inside. And unfortunately on this corner here, it's, really, it's just almost impossible to go around the outside. It's the only place I could have gone because he blocked the right-hand side. And the, the, the corner kind of has adverse camber and you fall away if you're on the outside, so it doesn't really work. So again, another story developing here. Another Lexus, under, uh, I'm under attack from another Lexus. And I don't quite defend that time. I didn't think he was quite within range to go for the move, and I t it turned out to be turned out to be the correct decision. So, just keeping the position. You see just how much the guy in fourth has pulled away now on that lap into the pits. I've braked a tiny bit too late onto the grass. Can I recover it? No, I can't. Oh my god, I've been reset. I've been reset back onto the track, and well, I've lost. I've just lost about ten seconds. So I'm going to get demoted like 80,000 positions. I'm technically in first at this moment here, it says on the top left, but I can't be bothered with this if I'm just going to get reset. I, I I was having a nightmare driving that car, so I thought to myself, right, that's it, I'm not going to drive that car anymore. I'm going to drive a car that I'm comfortable with, and the Lexus is a car that I'm comfortable with, so we're going to try it out here. You see just how much smoother it is with the turns, it just has really direct steering. The only issue with it really is on throttle. It can be a bit sketchy coming out of the corners. But in terms of the steering, very, very linear, very easy to steer through the turns. So if you want an easy car to control, which is typically quite a good car, and perhaps in some ways underappreciated in Group 3, then uh, the Lexus could be the car for you. you see a couple of mistakes. This isn't by any means a clean lap, but it is going to turn out to be a good one. See, my ghost there is a 203.8, which is marginally slower than the 2037 that I set in the 4GT. So I'm just trying to really beat my 4GT time to kind of prove that this is the better car, for me at least. So yes, the 4GT can get superior lap times, but sometimes, you know, if I can't drive the 4GT, then I can't drive it. Uh, so if, I, if I'm better in this car, then I might as well drive this car. And it, so far, it seems to be proven to be the case because I'm just a lot more consistent and I have much more confidence in the car. I can actually throw it around uh, without really worrying about it too much. In 4 GT, you have to be so, so careful. You have to tiptoe around a lot of corners. So through the final turn, gaining quite a few temps uh, in the final sector, up about two temps up, I'm gonna cross the line at 2.035 this time around. So we actually improved by about two temps on our fastest and it wasn't a clean lap. We could have gone maybe two, three temps quicker at least than that but here is the race so I set a slightly faster lap and actually the improvement of two temps actually put us on pole there we would have been second if we didn't improve so I suppose that could be crucial if we can just pull away on lap one then um, it should be good it should be a good race so let's let's pull away from the line with uh, Lexus in close attention behind into the first corner you know, just be really clinical here from from pole position it's really sort of a mission just to really be really clinical through the first couple of corners and just hope that you can sort of break the toe and get away 
and already it looks like I've got half a second, or more than half a second, so he is borderline slipstream range, but he's not really going to be getting too much of a benefit, he's a little bit too far away, he needs to be, I think, slightly less than half a second, I know I said half a second earlier, but I think about four tenths is his prime range, so this time around there, not quite uh, close enough. So up the hill for the first time in the Lexus, in the race, turning in on the tree. And, you know, this is an old school circuit. You have to really, really get uh, familiar with the walls and, you know, get really, really close up to them if you really, if you really want to maximise the time. It's, it's an old school circuit. It's good in that respect. You get punished for your mistakes. And you know what? I like that because I make a lot of mistakes and you learn from mistakes. So it's good to make them. Although at the time you hate them, but... You learn from mistakes, I think. So down the hill, into Forest Elbow, I believe it is, or is it not? Am I going to get it wrong once again and trigger more Australians? Probably. You can see the gap there now, opening up still around about 0.8 now, a little bit more than it was. So I kind of pulled away a tiny bit through the mountain, not much. He's an Alexis as well, and his qualifying time was just one tenth off mine. So based on that, and just based on that alone, I could probably deduce that he's about the same pace as me. Although I would also say that, I've said this many times, but my qualifying pace isn't as good as my race pace. I think in a race I can deliver fairly good lap times, fairly consistently high lap times compared to my qualifying time. Sometimes people, they're really good in qualifying, they can deliver just an amazing lap out of the blue, but then they can just get nowhere near that lap in, in the race. I mean, that's a good thing because at least you're qualifying high and you're going to get good results as a result of qualifying high but at the same time if you can't replicate that in a race then you're probably going to be fighting a defensive race when uh, people behind you who didn't qualify as well but are quick in a race uh, are trying to fight past you uh, but in this occasion here uh, a solid first lap so just below two, t 2 minutes 10 for the first lap and actually they're battling behind so into turn 2 the Frenchman is actually going to take over the, uh, the lead of the chasing pack in uh, the Ford Mustang, yes he does, the blue Mustang behind now, one and a half seconds behind, so immediately as a result of their little fighting, they're going to lose half a second in the first split of this lap. So again, further good news for me, at this point here really just trying to just be very clinical with the race, there's not too much point in really pushing everything to the limit, just be, just be very very careful to not make too many mistakes. And uh, as soon as you make a big mistake, let's say you make a mistake and uh, you lose half a second, the guys behind it, they, they notice that, you know, they're going to see that and they're going to think, okay, this guy's here for the taking, we can catch up with this guy, for sure. So you just really don't, you just really don't want to do that and give any sort of psychological edge to the people behind. So just be really efficient with the drive, so up to two seconds the gap now, so it's increased by a further second on this lap so far. They're just going down to 1.9, didn't get the best of exits, clearly, through that turn, onto this back straight. In fact, it's dropping still, although I would argue that he is in the Mustang, and it must be, presumably, the Mustang must have better top-end speed. So that is something to consider as well. It seems like the Mustang has, has better top-end, so if he does catch up with me, it, he's going to be a rather hard defensive fight. If, you know, if his car's going to be three taps quicker down the straight, then that's going to be quite hard to defend against. So I will have to make sure that I get on the right, the, right, uh, the correct side to block him if that happens. Hopefully it doesn't. As we finish lap two, onto lap three, setting a 205.6. I'm just watching the fastest lap thing on the left-hand side. So I've set the fastest lap. Is anyone going to beat that? I do like to know if anyone's going to beat it. And actually, it turns out that no one beat it. So on that lap around, no one gained on me. I was actually gain I, I was getting away from everyone on the track. So that's good news. That's going to help my psychological mindset at this point. So down the hill, through the dip, just dipping two wheels onto the grass, and that's fine. This is lap five, so we're gonna be coming into the pits at the end of this lap. I think I've done a decent job on the fuel saving, haven't been shifting too hard, and I think in the full GT I was really revving the crap out of it. So even if I did make it into the pit lane, I think my, my pit stop would have been quite long. But uh, as it stands here, going to go in with about 20% of fuel, which isn't too bad actually, uh, for this race. And the gap actually up to 4.5 seconds, so the, the guy who was running second now down in 7th. 
so clearly making some mistakes. The race is very spread now, so clearly the, the talent that has been um, mostly present in, in previous races not turning up here. Coming into the pits though, I'm going to try to make, not make the same mistake. Coming in, just hitting the grass, and unfortunately I'm going to be a stupid idiot once again and make the same mistake. The car just sitting 90 degrees and it won't even go into the pit lane. And I've got a penalty and I'm going to... Right, that's it. That's it. Right. Where did I put that rope? Mum? Yeah, where did you put the rope? Oh. Right, that's it. Never play this game again. That's the end of my career. See you later. Right. Yeah, back, back to Forza we go. Back to Forza. Listen.